What's happening guys? Keith here with your September 30th edition of the Impact Report. So if this is your first time checking out the page, make sure to hit that subscribe button along with that notify bell. And if you haven't checked out my review of this past week's episode of Impact, you can do so by clicking the link at the top of the screen. And speaking of this past week's episode of Impact, it drew 222,000 viewers and ranked 111 on Cable's Top 150. This is slightly down from last week's 229,000 viewers. However, the ranking has gone up as it was in the 130s last week and it was 111 this week. So it is rumored that Impact television contract with Pop TV is up sometime in November. Uh, they have announced a set of tapings for November at Las Vegas. Um, there will be three nights of tapings, but we haven't heard any news on them re-upping with Pop TV or if they are exploring other networks. So if any of that news comes out, I will be sure to let you guys know. So heading over to Impact's YouTube page to look at the top three videos from this past week's episode of Impact. Uh, number three, Taya Valkyrie returns to issue a Bound for Glory challenge. This had 52,000 views. Number two, Phoenix and Pentagon abduct Dave Christ, 73,000 views. And number one, Johnny Impact and Eddie Edwards vs. Killer Cross and Moose. That had 76,000 views. So according to PW Insider, Impact Wrestling has opened discussions with their current tag team champions, LAX, Santana, and Ortiz, seeking to negotiate a new deal with the team, who have been one of the most entertaining aspects of the company over the last year. In advance of their current deal expiring, PW Insider has learned. Conversations between the two sides began while Impact was in Mexico City for TV several weekends ago and have continued, although they have yet to come to terms. The team's contract is not imminently up, PWInsider.com is told, but the promotion is seeking to lock them and others into longer-term deals. So that would be fantastic news if they did do that because uh, LAX is one of the hottest tag teams in wrestling right now. So Eddie Edwards has a book coming out this Tuesday, October 2nd, called Anything is Possible, the Eddie Edwards Story. So here's some information from the press release. Uh, With as much impact as his signature move, The Boston Knee Party, Anything is Possible, the Eddie Edwards Story, takes fans of all ages inside the ring for an inspiring look into world champion wrestler Eric Mayer, a.k.a. Impact Wrestling's Eddie Edwards, journey to the top of the independent wrestling scene. Mayer teams up with co-writer and DC Comics artist Mark Poulton to deliver highlights from his incredible career. The only man in history to win the Impact Wrestling, Ring of Honor, and GHC World Heavyweight Championships, Professional Wrestling's Triple Crown. Mayer recounts his days as kid dreaming of a wrestling career, to training with the legendary Killer Kowalski, to living and training in Japanese dojo in the footsteps of his heroes. The world is full of underdogs, but as diehard Eddie Edwards, Eric Mayer proves that with hard work and determination, his mantra of anything is possible can be true for anyone. So that comes out October 2nd, this Tuesday. Um, So last week I had reported about Impact Wrestling teaming up with Border City Wrestling. And next Saturday, October 6th, in Windsor, Canada, will be the Border City Wrestling 25th Anniversary Show. This will also serve as an Impact Wrestling one night only. The card for the show has been announced, and it looks to be a great one. Uh, We have Johnny Impact vs. Matt Seidel vs. Congo Kong vs. A1. Tommy Dreamer, D'Lo Brown, Cody Diener, John Bolin, Johnny Swinger, Scott Damore in a Champions Showcase. Uh, David Arquette and RJ City versus Halal Beefcake, which is Joe Coleman and Idris Abraham. Uh, Sammy Callahan and, o- and the Chris Brothers versus Chris Sabin, PD Williams, and Tyson Duke. Uh, Stone Rockwell and Scarlett Bordeaux versus Eli Drake and Casey Spinelli. Moose versus Eddie Edwards in a street fight. Kiara Hogan versus Giselle Shaw. Brett Banks and Aiden Prince versus Jake Something and Phil Atlas, and there will be a Battle Royal. So that looks to be an incredible card. Um, A little odd that they're doing Moose versus Eddie Edwards, considering that they are going to have a match at Pound for Glory as well. Um, But, hey, it is what it is. 
And on Sunday, Impact will be partnering with Border City Wrestling as well for the live Twitch special titled Motown Showdown. I talked about this last week, uh, but the card has been released for that show. Uh, we have Johnny Impact vs. Moose, Eddie Edwards and Tommy Dreamer vs. John Bolin and Johnny Swinger, Matt Seidel vs. Nate Matson vs. Ace Austin vs. Petey Williams, Kiara Hogan vs. Scarlett Bordeaux vs. Giselle Shaw, Congo Kong vs. D'Lo Brown, and Ace Romero vs. Sammy Callahan. So another stacked card that looks to be good. Uh, so this week's guest on the Impact Wrestling Pass Press was none other than Abyss. Um, I'm going to go through this. This was over an hour long, so there was a, they covered a lot. Um, Abyss is just a fantastic all-around person, and this was a, a great listen if you guys have the hour to spare. However, I know most people don't, so I wrote basically everything that was talked about in the Press Pass show. So he has asked what current Impact Wrestling star he enjoys watching. He names Killer Cross, Sammy Callahan, Moose, and Rich Swan. Um, his standout matches throughout his career was 05 Lockdown versus AJ Styles in the Six Sides of Steel, the uh, 2006 Barbed Wire Massacre versus Sabu, and 2007 versus Sting, where he won the world title. He says being an agent was a good calling for him. He loves working with the talent, and he is able to give back. He's asked if there is any re regrets he has not doing in his career. He says no. He experienced a career he never expected to have, and the only regrets he does have is maybe a few stupid bumps that he took. Um, the most influential person in his career is Dutch Mantel. Uh, he gave him an opportunity, and he used the Abyss character in Puerto Rico first a year before bringing it to the U.S. He also names Jeff Jarrett and Dixie Carter for giving him a chance in Impact. He also says his trainer and named some legends that he was able to work with. Uh, he wants to be remembered in the wrestling business as someone who was a good person with a good heart and treated everyone with respect. He is asked if he wish a match with him and The Undertaker happened. He says it wasn't in the cards. He chose to stay with Impact because this company is his home. They gave him the opportunity and platform to show the fans what he can do, and he's always felt valued in the company. He never felt just like a number. Um, apparently, he was a late entry into the original Gauntlet for the Gold, uh, which was his first big opportunity. Uh, he says he was, or he's only one of two people in that match that wasn't a former WWE or WCW star. Uh, he thinks hardcore wrestling still has a place in wrestling because it still tells a story, but he really doesn't see the purpose of death matches. It's just meant to get people hurt. He says people should learn the business first before getting into hardcore wrestling. He says he didn't pick up a chair for the first time until like six years in the business. Um, he names his favorite weapons, obviously Janice, but he also says thumbtacks and barbed wire boards. His least favorite weapon is light bulbs. Um, he says wrestling Mick Foley was a bucket list moment. He enjoyed playing the Joseph Park character. It made the Abyss character mean more, and it gave him longevity. Um, he says that the current roster reminds him a lot of the roster back in 2002. A lot of hungry wrestlers. He obviously then goes on to praise Jimmy Jacobs, Sanjay Dutt, Scott, and Don with what they've done. Uh, he says that decay ended too, st too soon. It gave him longevity and it helped boost rosemary and crazy steve uh, his favorite angles were with sting sabu and aj styles um, he saw himself doing something always in the wrestling industry but however if that didn't work out he said he would have been involved in football in some sort of capacity uh, if he could nominate someone for next year's hall of fame he would pick mike Tanay. and then he finished the call with Thanking everyone, and he says he will see everyone on October 13th for the Hall of Fame induction. Um, I have one last thing for this week. Uh, so a couple weeks back, I talked about a meeting between WWE and Impact Wrestling. Uh, while there are no new details as far as the context of the meeting, it turns out that WWE was the one that reached out and requested the meeting rather than what it was originally reported, uh, which... What exactly went on during the meeting remains a mystery, but people from both sides have said that the two companies are no longer enemies as they were in the past. 
That leaves the door open for future collaborations, be them in-ring or licensing opportunities. Squashing the former animosity between the two companies is a huge step forward. So some positive news there. Um, That's really all I have for you guys this week. I will catch you back on Friday for my Impact review, unless obviously big news happens throughout the week. But thank you for checking out my video. And until next time, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Thanks, guys. Bye.